Okay, thanks again to Prof Quack for giving me the opportunity uh, to share today. I'm really is delighted uh, to be here. You know, some of you uh, may already know me from uh, six months ago when I led uh, another class uh, of Prof Quack. So I'm really glad to see some familiar faces. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Farhan, scientist at Yale University. Today I'll be uh, sharing some thoughts on cognitive neuroscience foundations for the learning sciences. It's a unique class spanning uh, two continents. It's the first time I'm doing this. So I'm right now in New Haven, east coast of the United States, and you guys are in Singapore. Initially I thought everyone would be in class, but apparently, you know, most of you are scattered all over the island as well. So. <laughs> Um, really interesting. Um, so, most of my uh, presentation and sharing will be slides, but I'm hoping there'll be uh, breaks in between uh, during which we can discuss uh, some uh, questions, and I look forward to hearing thoughts from you guys. If at any point um, something uh, breaks or it's uh, unclear, uh, Please uh, feel free to uh, say something. All right, so by the end of this session, I hope everyone in the class will be able to describe the methods and tools in cognitive neuroscience and understand at a basic level how the brain works in cognition and learning. Finally, at a higher level, explain findings that apply cognitive neuroscience to cognition, learning, and education. So these are the learning objectives uh, that uh, I hope uh, we can bear in mind as I go, go through the content. Prof. Quack, can you hear me? Still hear me well? Yes. Yes, we yes, can hear yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, hear you. good. So here's an overview of the content today to help orientate you. First, I'll introduce cognitive neuroscience. Then I'll talk about the methods and tools in cognitive neuroscience, in particular EEG and fMRI, as well as um, draw comparisons to other learning sciences methodologies. I'll then uh, discuss uh, about how the brain works in cognition and learning different approaches. And finally, we'll end with a brief survey of how cognitive neuroscience has been applied to education. Make it easier for uh, everyone to follow for each topic. I'll first present key concepts and definitions. I'll then uh, discuss um, relevant research findings. We'll then have some questions we can use uh, for uh, discussions. You we'll, uh, should also bring up uh, other issues uh, for each of the topics. There is a textbook for the course, I'm sure you're aware. Right? You know, International Handbook of the Learning Sciences, the most relevant chapter is chapter seven. Most of the content I'll be uh, sharing uh, would follow the text but I've also gone beyond the text to give you a broader understanding as well as more details and experiments. All right, let's now dive into the content. First, let me introduce cognitive neuroscience. So what is cognitive neuroscience? One definition that, that I find most compelling and accurate is that cognitive neuroscience is the biology of the mind. This definition is used in an influ influential uh, textbook uh, by pioneers in the field. The biology of the mind, there are two aspects to this definition. First is biology and second, the mind. It's biology because the field is interested in the structure and function of the brain. 
here you see a movie of neurons in the living brain from my own research. You see green flashes in roughly circular structures. Those flashes uh, are instances when the neurons are active. So this happens at very small scales, uh, micrometers. You can also study uh, the brain at larger scales, such as the whole brain. This is a picture. Can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so this is a picture of a human brain that's been harvested from a donor. Wow. Actually, yep, that's how big the human brain is. Traditionally, the study of the structure and function of the brain is uh, the domain of neurobiology and uh, neurology. The other aspect of cognitive neuroscience is the mind, and it's traditionally studied um, by cognitive uh, psychologists. Here, researchers are interested in aspects of the mind, such as memory, problem solving, language, and so on. So, putting it together, if anyone asks you for a definition of Cognitive neuroscience, use this one, biology of the mind. It's easy to remember and highly appropriate for our purposes as we explore the biological basis for, the, for how the brain and mind work.